So the big question is this. How do pastors like us who remain focused on the mission of Jesus and serving our communities without being distracted by everything in the world around us, how do we increase our effectiveness while living a lifestyle that doesn't compromise our health, our families, or our personal relationships with Jesus? That's the question this podcast is going to answer. I'm Dr. Brandon Party Cooper, and welcome to the Ministry Hackers Podcast. What's up, everybody? I hope you are doing well. Are you having trouble getting your message across, whether it's in your sermons or whether it's in your videos or whatever it is you're doing? Do you feel like your message is just not getting across to your congregation and to your people? All of us know that we are in this time where uh, everybody is just inundated with information, whether it's looking on their phones, whether it's watching their computers or their TV or uh, whatever it is, they are just inundated with information all day long. And so when they come into, let's say, our Sunday morning services, they have been over driven with information all week. And probably before they walk into your sanctuary, they've had a ton of information thrown out of news and uh, social media and whatever articles they're reading, maybe they're reading books, maybe they did their devotion that morning, tons of information coming in at them um, constantly. And what we're finding and in, in what the studies are showing is that there's too much information for us to process properly. It's too much information for us to understand and to assimilate into our life and into our behaviors, which is why in some ways in our churches and in, in our services and our congregations, we're seeing uh, a slower adjustment to um, the things we preach about and things that we teach from the Bible and scripture and principles and those things that we're giving, we're seeing a slower uh, uh, assimilation into uh, applying those things to, to um, people's lives. And one of the reasons is, is because when we preach, when we teach, when we have the attention of our congregants and the people in our church, when we have their attention, we are just adding to the noise because we're inundating them with tons of information. Um, hopefully when we're preaching, we're preaching, uh, we're, we're pulling straight from scripture. We're preaching biblical principles and biblical concepts. We're not just, uh, just pulling about whatever we think or whatever, you know, is on the top of our heads or whatever. Uh, hopefully we're pulling scripture and we're pulling biblical uh, uh, truths that are applicable to the people's lives uh, who are, sitting in in the chairs or in the pews within our church. But one of the things that we tend to do is we tend to pack our sermons and our teachings with so much information that it's overwhelming. A principle that Andy Stanley teaches um, in his book, Can We Do That? Uh, He teaches that we need to focus on one thing. When we speak, when we preach, when we're teaching, whatever it is, we we need to use just one thing, focus on one thing and teach that. And so I don't know about you, but I know when I preach, I tend to have anywhere between three and six points to my sermon. Now, there's kind of an overall theme or an overall point that I'm wanting to get at. But a lot of times we create these lists that are great for, um, you know, great for social media, great for those of us who are saying, hey, I want to learn how to do something. Give me the step by step. Um, It's great for certain contexts. But in a, in, a, in a sermon or in a Sunday morning context, sometimes we just need to simplify, break down to just one point. Here is the one point, and this is how it applies to your life. Um, surround it with some good stories that are engaging and drawing people in, um, but just give your people one point. Uh, that, what that'll do is, is it'll cut through the noise because it's simplified. It's <clears throat> Even though it may be deep and even though it may be... Um, you know, it may hit them at home and the Holy Spirit works on their heart and draws their attention to it. Uh, Giving them one thing that really hits home for them and really applies to where they are today is going to have a lot more impact and probably going to carry with them throughout the week much better than if we give them five or six points that they then have to go home and try and uh, apply to their lives. A lot of times we talk about how... uh, people who come into our churches and sit in our sermons and hear us preach, they don't remember on Monday what we preached on Sunday, let alone what we preached last year. Well, part of that is because we just give them too much. And right now it's even more so the case because everybody is so focused on just trying to live life and survive. Um, Everybody's out of their comfort zone. And so whenever ever people get out of their comfort zones, they, they narrow their focus, they narrow their view and they don't have as much, 
um, extra attention and extra energy because they're spending so much energy. Think about, um, think about when you're sick or like right now, my allergies have been super bad for the last week or so. And so even breathing at times is taking more energy because I'm constantly sniffling or, you know, my nose is stuffed up or I've been sneezing or whatever the case is. And so breathing at times takes a lot more energy just because I'm having to focus on doing it rather than just it being an involuntary thing that I'm doing. Well, in the same way, everybody, uh, you know, right now is trying to, you know, figure out how are they going to pay their bills when their job hours have been cut or, you know, how are they going to manage their home life uh, with their kids being home two days out of the week um, doing school or how are they, uh, how are they going to, um, I don't know, manage the schedule because now the schedule is all off and, and they're out of their rhythms. And some of us are working from home who don't normally do that. And so there's just a lot more energy that everybody's expending during the week to just try and make it and just try and uh, get through the week and survive. And then they come in on a Sunday morning and we inundate them with tons of information and tons of, uh, of, 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 you know, teaching and, and things that are all good and all important. And, you know, we're putting them in our sermons because we feel like it's, it's necessary, but at the same time, they just don't have the, the bandwidth to consume it all or to absorb it all in. And so one thing that I would add to what Andy Stanley says about teaching one thing is I would say also teach shorter. Um, now's the time. If you can, I know some pastors and preachers, we have a hard time uh, speaking less than 30 minutes, but I would say now would be the time to really uh, try and make that adjustment, speaking 20 to 30 minutes and hammering home one good teaching. And then what you can do is, is take all of the extra stuff that you feel like you uh, wanted to put in your sermon or was important or was applicable. Take all of that extra stuff and create a series of videos, maybe two or three videos that are five to 10 minutes each, and then put it out during the week so that your people can then hear the sermon on Sunday and then hear those or watch those videos throughout the week or those podcasts throughout the week. So they are still engaged with what you said on Sunday and you're adding to their experience throughout the course of the week. And so instead of forgetting what you preached on, on Sunday, instead of forgetting that on Monday, you now have a quick five minute video on Monday that reminds them of what they just learned on Sunday and then also goes deeper and, and, and equips them more and helps them uh, apply it to their lives better. Um, Sunday morning is huge and the Sunday morning service is vital uh, to the growth of a church and the growth of the people in that church. However, the Sunday morning service is not the only time and the only way to grow our people. And, and, and we've seen this over the last few months. We have to figure out new and innovative ways to expand that Sunday morning experience and expand it into the week to serve our people at a deeper level, to simplify their experience so that we get a greater impact on their personal lives while still not just overwhelming them with more information. And so, um, so again, focus on one thing. If you can shorten your sermons, uh, preach a shorter sermon, and then take the extra good quality stuff that you want to give in that sermon, take that and make short videos or short emails or something that's going to carry that Sunday morning experience into the week and, and expound their uh, understanding of scripture, understanding of, of the principle uh, that you're trying to teach them that, that Sunday morning and expand their experience through the course of the week. So when they come in the next week, it hasn't been a week since they've heard from you. It hasn't been a week since they've thought about their uh, spiritual growth or, you know, the series that we're in or whatever they've been kind of, there's been uh, touch points throughout the week that carries them into the next Sunday morning. So when they walk in that next Sunday morning, they're ready, they're primed, they've heard from you throughout the week, they've been taught throughout the week, um, and then you can hit them with one more point again. And so simplifying it uh, for them and making it more impactful. Um, and I think for, for all of us who are pastors and ministry leaders on some level, I think it's also more gratifying and will be a lot, uh, a lot more um, exciting to see 
the impact that we're making on the on our people's lives throughout the course of the week. And so, um, so just a quick tip for you this uh, this in this episode. I hope you are doing well, and I will see you in the next episode. <laughs>